Hi folks, I'm Frank Burgos with Ugly Flexo and today is January 12th, uh, 2008. And uh, this video is a reply to Tim Ebel who posted a question on our bulletin board at www.flexoexchange/forum and I'm going to read his question and it's going to be posted over here on this uh, YouTube section and it will also be posted on our bulletin board and uh, then I'm going to dissect it and draw out uh, what my understanding of what he's describing is and any thoughts I have on it as I go along so Tim you, uh, you sent me this question late uh, November and I apologize for the delay uh, and you're probably thinking right now uh, that Frankie's not going to put anything out but uh, it's just been <laughs> Learning this whole uh, thing is a, it's a very consuming process and it takes some time. So we're working through the kinks, but we're starting to come up with schedules and that sort of stuff. And we're working behind the scenes. We're doing some cool things here. You may notice already that uh, the layout on Ugly Flexo starts, is making a little more sense. And, uh, and that requires a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So uh, I'm sorry, but here we go, okay? And if I get it wrong, let me know and I'll, uh, and I'll modify it based on your interpretation. Okay. Now, Tim's uh, topic is sticky back application methods, okay? The methods for splicing tape described here will be used on wide web cylinders, including steel, chrome coated, and sleeves, okay? I'm going to draw all this out in a little bit. The scribe lines are built into the cylinders in four equal parts horizontally around the cylinder. Also, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, also, I usually have one vertically to indicate the center of the cylinder, okay? And uh, also, due to using wide web cylinders, the tape is applied opposite the wind of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the web, if you will, the wind, opposite the wind. In other words, opposite from narrow web where the tape follows the path of the web. And I kind of chopped that up, I'm sorry, but let me go ahead and draw my, what I understand Tim is saying here, and then I'm going to go through his methods, okay? So, the method for uh, splicing tape described here will be used on wide web cylinders. So let's draw out a wide web cylinder, okay? And, describe, and it could be also sleeves. So let's draw that out. Alright. And I go through these things because it helps evolve, and also I want you guys to start to learn how to communicate graphically, okay? These are uh, things that you learn uh, and drafting and graphic communication and stuff, but it doesn't hurt you to know how to do, kind of draw these things out yourself, okay? So as, as an exercise, I also do that for you. So now, we're going to draw a cylinder, all right? I'm going to draw a, 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 a kind of a tall ellipse here. And it's going to come out this way, and it's going to end over here. So I'll draw another circle, but I'm going to draw the back arc of it, okay? Now I'm going to draw a line over here. I'm going to draw a line over there. All right, that's a cylinder, okay? And uh, if we want to, we could put this over here, representing the end of it, right? But that's enough detail right there, okay? Now, he says there are four scribe lines going on the cylinder. So there, there would be one going along the top, let's say, right along there. Another one going a quarter of the way. Another one back behind here somewhere, okay? Let's say it's behind here. And then another one back behind here. four equal parts around that cylinder, okay? And it's kind of hard to visualize that hidden line right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate it so it doesn't mess up our drawing, okay? We're just going to look at the lines you can see, all right? Those are the lines we can see, the top line, that one, and not even the bottom one there, all right? All right. Now, he also says there's uh, also a vertical around, one around the center for uh, so that you know where the center line of the cylinder is. So that would be around like that, okay? So now you have these four lines equally distant around that cylinder, and you have a vertical line representing the cylinder, center of the cylinder, and there's a cylinder. And if it's a sleeve, of course it would just be that outer portion there that you're talking about that's sliding on and off a mandrel on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, one of these wide web presses that have cantilevered sleeves, okay? All right. Now, what's the other thing he says? 
Uh, Duty user and wireless the tape is applied opposite the wind of the tape. In other words, opposite from narrow web where the tape path, uh, tape follows the path of the web. Okay. All right. Usually in a narrow web configuration, uh, I think what he's talking about is you're going to have this is your roll of uh, sticky back, and it's going to be coming off off of here and onto this. You know, I'm just going to cut it right here. Okay. It's going to be winding around this like that. So this is the direction that this tape unwinds in. But in wide web, because it's longer, and sometimes you get the convenient width of the, the width of the tape so that it goes around and you don't have too much waste or too much of a gap involved. I think what Tim is talking about is that they actually have the tape uh, coming off like this. And that just represents where I've cut off the tape, okay? So now when they go to wide web, they unroll the tape like this. The adhesive side is on the back here, and that's going to go onto the cylinder, okay? All right. All right, so now we're going to start to actually dissect the process. This is a, a drawing of what's going on. You've got a cylinder or sleeve here, the mounting tape. And this, in, in Tim's illustration, happens to be 18 inches. Okay? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. All right. So now, but it, uh, uh, in order for us to um, to do this, I'm going to erase this here in a minute, and I'm going to do it like we're just looking at the end of the cylinder. It's a little round circle, and we're going to make the drawing very simple so we can visualize what he's talking about. All right. So the first thing he said is, uh, is uh, <coughs> scribe line methods. Number one, cut the width of the tape needed for the plate being mounted. Okay. So if, if you have in this direction a 30-inch plate, then you would probably cut the tape a little bit over that 30 inches, okay? So now, apply the tape approximately 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch over the scribe line. Here's where I'm going to erase this. I'm going to draw it like we're looking at the end so you can see a cross-section of what's happening. <clears throat> It's not erasing very well. All right. All right. So now he's applying the tape, okay? And the tape is going to be applied around the cylinder in this direction. So here's the cylinder now. All right. Or the sleeve. And I'm just going to draw the very outside here. I'm not going to draw the shaft end or anything like that. Okay. And so this is the uh, plate cylinder or sleeve, okay? That's what this is right here. Now, we're going to look at one scribe line, okay? And I'm going to exaggerate it, and I'm going to make that scribe line deeper and wider than it actually is, okay? But there's your scribe line, and you've got four of these around this cylinder. But so we can kind of see what's happening here when we start to cut uh, I made it a channel that's actually deeper and wider than a true uh, scribe, uh, 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 scribe line. So I'm going to make it a little bit shallow, okay? It's about square. Okay. The first thing he says, cut the width of the tape for the plate being mounted. We did that. We cut a piece of uh, width of tape. Apply the tape approximately one eighth inch to one quarter inch over the scribe line. So what he's telling us there, I think, is, now let's say the, 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 the uh, tape is going to go around the cylinder this way. Okay, and you, he's got enough to overlap. He's going to apply the tape hanging over that scribe line. We'll draw the rest of this tape in a minute. But he's hanging it over right here, one eighth inch to one quarter inches over the center of the scribe line. Okay, so the tape is hanging over this center line of this cylinder. Okay, by one eighth or one quarter of an inch. Smooth the tape down as you normally would. Stop when you get about two inches away from overlapping the tape. So now you're smoothing the tape and you bring the cylinder around and so the tape is being applied around the cylinder like that, right? 